Life is absurd. Existence is absurd. The cosmic absurdity, the existential absurdity of all of this. Sometimes you just gotta sit back and and just just ponder. Just ponder on this stuff, man. Just sit there and just philosophize about it for a second. Like we're a bunch of primates on a mud ball hurtling through the cosmos. You know, the cosmos is a very specifically finite amount of years old. Like it's not a hundred trillion years old. No, it's 13.7 whatever numbers years old specifically you know they round it up to 13.8 billion years whatever you know we're a specific type of primate we're, we're a specific type of great ape you know we're not a species of lizard you know, we're a specific type of primate you can look into the science book oh we're that type of primate and we have you know you can read off all of the stats and whatever just, I just, I, I think more people need to just sit back and just think about it, and you know, have a laugh at just how nuts this stuff is. Like when you're, when you're at work and you're just, you're stressing out, you're losing hair of all of the stress that you're going through. Your eyes are bloodshot. Your blood pressure's through the roof. You know, you just gotta sit back and think at the pure meaninglessness and the pure nihilism of it all because nihilism is true whether you want to believe it or not the statement the claim that the universe has no inherent meaning or purpose as far as you know you want to be a, a rational skeptic about it the evidence of that of a claim that there is some purpose just there just doesn't hold up so with that being said, nihilism is true. So, again, this goes back to just the pure absurdity of this, you know. Let's, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in on the, on the specific Homo sapiens sapien species of primate, right? But all of the, the absurdity... Of, of that being said, let, let's zoom in to, to, you know, our favorite type of primate, us, obviously. You know, half the world, half of the mud ball, half of the primates on the mud ball hurtling through the cosmos struggle to find clean water. On the other half of the mud ball hurtling through the cosmos, you have million dollar production sets with people in suits, people dressed in suits, arguing and debating about grown adults who are millionaires from playing a children's game. The absurdity, the the duality of that is is existentially comedic to me. No, I'm, again, I gotta I gotta preface this, man. I'm not trying to be some type of moral crusader. I'm not I'm not saying, oh, that's wrong or that's right. This is the right way to do things. Oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. I'm on a moral high ground compared to you. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I'm. A, I'm not a participant. I'm just a neutral bystander. I'm a non-enemy, you know, I'm not a participant. I'm, I'm not, an, I'm just, I'm not, I'm on no side. I'm simply an observer. You know, front row, front row seat to the biggest circus in the universe. You know, 
just the absurdity of that is, is, is comedic to me. You know? It's like, you know, you're free to do whatever the hell you want, but I just find it funny, like, people, you know, taking their personal lives serious without that that notion of the background. Look, man, all of this is a bunch of nihilistic, meaningless nonsense. You know? Now, if you accept that, and then from there you go on and, you know, you insert meaning into your personal life, hey, man, go for it. Got nothing against it. But if you're making these claims about, oh, there's some purpose, oh, there's there's some purpose after you after you die, there's an afterlife, and there's a big magic man, magic, there's a big magic bearded man in a nightgown in the sky that cares where you stick your dick at and you know, shit like that. Look, man, I don't know, I don't, you lost me there. I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. You know. You know, I haven't seen the evidence for that for those fantastical claims. You know, I haven't seen the evidence for that. Even if you did, look at the the bizarre the bizarreness of that. A magic bearded guy in a nightgown in the sky somewhere watching you masturbate. I mean, that's just fucking sick. I mean, if you're into that, oh, let me, let me take that back, let me take that back. If you're into that sort of thing, you know, voyeurism, you know, being a cub, you know, that, that's all cool, man. I don't kink shame around here. That's all cool, man. It's all gravy, buddy. But just the, a bizarre, you can't just say, you, you can't not say that that's at least a little bit weird, a little bit strange. A little bit comedically, existentially comedic, you know. There's some comedy to that. It's like that saying, you know, life is a tragedy to those who feel and a comedy to those who think. And whether or not with the truth of that, it just it's, you know, I can I can see the sentiment of it. Everything, like, think about it. Everything is an ad. This this bombardment with advertisements to buy stuff because we've made a society where there's no longer a threat of death. You know, there's no longer a threat of death by a wild animal or, you know, even to certain degrees natural disasters and things of that nature we've lessened that threat so we made it to where you have to have this this piece of paper that we've imbued with value but turns out the guys that make the rules say the only way that you can earn that piece of paper is by selling something but what if you don't need something sell something motherfucker you gotta buy and sell shit, motherfucker. Okay. But what if we have everything that we want and need? So then that's where you come with the advertisements and the commercials. So you have people selling stuff that nobody needs, that nobody wants or needs. And so they have to spend billions of dollars in marketing and science and philosophy, neurochemistry, social engineering, sociology, to convince people that their product is better than the next guy's, when both of their products are the same of the same value, and nobody needs or wants them. So it's necessarily manipulation. It's necessarily a scam. Because you just want my money. You just want the guy's money. You don't give a fuck if the product's good. You just want to convince the guy that the product's good so you can get his money. Hmm. Quite interesting.
quite comedic to me. Very humorous, very humorous. Again, that adds to that absurdity, that, that cosmic level of just fucking, you gotta sit back and fucking laugh at that shit, man. Don't take this shit too fucking serious, man. Unless you get off to that. Unless like you unless you take the no, that notion of nihilism, okay, yeah, it's nihilism. There's no inherent worth, meaning, or purpose in this. You accept that, and then from there you say, but I get a kick out of, you know, being stressed out and putting forth effort and, you know, you know, getting real riled up. That's all cool, man. Like I said, I don't have a, a dog in a race. You know, every, every different strokes for different folks. You know, different strokes for different folks. Do whatever the hell you want, man. Just, just the absurdity. Like, on that mud ball, half of the primates on one side struggle to find clean water. And on the other half, they're, they're literally shortening their lifespan because they have too much to eat. They eat too damn much. I mean, that... Again, I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm not poking fun at people's hardships but I'm just saying you do have to see the the existential cosmic level of absurdity and and comedic humor in that you just have to come on man you gotta loosen up a little bit man I mean this shit is hilarious